uh, depending on the translation, essentially it's reported that Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the average Christian will tell you that what that essentially means is, and they don't, they, they will deny what I'm about to say initially, but I'll, I can catch them out on this one. But what they are really telling you, most Christians, is, is that the way you come to the Father is through Christianity. Uh, the question was, um, person, I'm not going to name the person in case they don't want to be named, but they know who they are. Um, the question is, I, I've got to get the question right because it's a, it's a simpli simplistic question if I don't phrase it correctly. The question is, like, they were expressing that they've started to listen to other people, other spiritual teachers outside of Christianity. And they were kind of expressing they're a little bit nervous about doing that, but they also expressed that they're finding a lot of peace, joy and love, and, and um, they're discovering a lot more depth to spirituality. And then, then the the question, you see, the question comes up. There's always this fear among Christians to look elsewhere, and the reason for that is based on the idea of Jesus being the only way to the Father. Now, this is a big thing among Christians. Um, it's a source of arrogance among some Christians. It's a source of um, fear. In, as I'm expressing right now, to look elsewhere, or to even dare, you know, look elsewhere. But let's let's talk about. I want to talk about what that means because no one ever seems to use some critical thinking. It seems like people are afraid to use some critical thinking. What's the problem here? You know, let's critically think this for a moment. Now, depending on the translation, you know, and that's you know a whole other subject because translations differ. Uh, depending on the translation. Essentially, it's reported that Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the average Christian will tell you that what that essentially means is, and they don't, they, they will deny what I'm about to say initially, but I'll, I can catch them out on this one. But what they are really telling you, most Christians, is, is that the way you come to the Father is through Christianity. That's the way you that's the only way you can come to the Father. So what most Christians believe is, is, is that unless you're a Christian, you're screwed. <laughs> Excuse my language. You're hooped. You know, if you're not a Christian, you're done. You're, you've done. You're done. You're finished. And people who believe in hell are essentially saying that unless you become a Christian, they say, yeah, unless you accept Jesus, but they really mean become a Christian. That's what they really mean. Uh, unless you come across a very rare minority of people who recognize that you can still, you know, um, have a relationship with Jesus, whatever that means. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And uh, still, you know, make it, so to, so to speak. But you see, Christianity is a very strange religion in many ways um, because what they try and tell you is that you know, you just, you say a little prayer, you say a prayer saying, I accept Jesus into my heart, and s somehow through that ritual, which to me sounds very much like a, um, you know, a, a, a superstitious prayer, or a superstitious spell, like, that, to me that's what they're doing, they're saying, okay, say this little spell, Jesus will jump into you instantly, and, um, and you'll go to heaven, but that's not what Jesus said. Now, this is a critical issue. If, if, if it really is that, then Jesus should have said something like, at some future time, a religion will be created in my name, and the only way to the Father will be through that religion. You see, when Jesus spoke those words, or, or Jesus is reported to, be, to have spoken those words, there was no Christian religion. There was no Christian religion. There was only Jesus, who was this... Um, this radical person coming up against the religion of his time. 
come really coming up against the religion of his time uh, to the extent where they killed him. So, to me, I don't see much difference between Christianity and Judaism anyway. They're both uh, conceptualized activities of man at a very lower level, very lower or much lower level of consciousness uh, than Jesus functioned in. Now, how do I say that? I know that's going to upset a lot of people. I know that the die-hard literalist Christians who live from a conceptualized mind uh, will say I'm an antichrist or whatever. They'll come against me and so on and so forth. I've heard it all before. Don't waste your time posting the comments. It's just, I've heard it all before. I know, I know how your brain works. But let me say to you, you're functioning in a very low level of consciousness because all you're doing is you're intellectually conceptualizing the words of Jesus and you're living from words about Jesus and you're missing the point. You're missing the spiritual aspect. You're missing the fact that Jesus was talking about a very important spiritual aspect. So that is a quick um, side point to people who react that way. Because do you think I haven't met people who reacted that way? Um, I've literally been I've literally been called an antichrist, you know, or the antichrist in one case. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously start you know world domination from a you know, a rented apartment in Calgary. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But anyway, um, the the point, coming back to the point, Jesus didn't say through religion. He didn't say through Christianity. He said through me. Now, what does through me mean? This is the million dollar question, the hundred million dollar, the, the billion trillion dollar question. If the only way to the Father is through me, how do you do the through me? How can you do the through me? What is the through me? Okay, and as I say, Christians would tell you it's saying their little prayer and joining the Christian religion, becoming a Christian. Um, but that's ridiculous because uh, someone can be on, someone could have killed a million people and on their deathbed say, I, I received Jesus into my heart. Uh, and you're telling me that that's, you know, a way to the Father. Um, if you're a universalist, you're going to believe they get to the Father anyway. And that's a whole other subject. I'm not going there. But anyway, coming back to the... I'm just trying to point out the uh, the nature of that logic. Now, this is what I believe through me means. When I look at Jesus, I look at a man who lived in a completely higher level of consciousness to the average person. Now, sorry, Mark, just give me a second, I need to... My mouth's drying up. Um, Jesus lived in a different level of consciousness, and I believe the level of consciousness that Jesus lived in, I call it a pre-fallen mindset. It's a pre-fallen consciousness. Now, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here, but the... The reason why I call it a pre-fallen consciousness or a pre-fallen mindset is because I believe that Adam and Eve, the, the story of Adam and Eve represents metaphorically the story of um, mankind falling from a level of consciousness that was connected to God. Now I use the word God, that's got so much baggage, replace that with spirit, you know, originating spirit, the originating spirit, the creator of all, the spirit that gives life to all, breathes life in man, the originating spirit, but I'm just going to call that God for now because everyone, the problem is, is the problem, see, do you see the problem, the conceptualization, the moment I say God, the intellectual mind conceptualizes what that means, okay, and some people, they see a white bearded, white haired guy, I, thousand miles away in the sky or a million trillion miles away in the sky some people imagine an angry person with uh, lightning bolts that's conceptualization the, the what conceptualization is where you a word is spoken and each person conceptualizes it creates a concept in their mind of what that word means okay now what I mean by this is I mean in the beginning you know using the Adam and Eve metaphor in the beginning, there was these two people who lived in union with God, 
they lived at a very high level of consciousness in paradise paradise to me is metaphorical for that level of consciousness and they in that their, their level of consciousness was so high they did not die essentially so all those things represent a very high level of consciousness now they fell out of that level of consciousness into a conceptual level of consciousness now the conceptual levels of consciousness is where you use knowledge of what you think is good and what you think is evil the knowledge of good and evil the knowledge of good and evil is a representation of conceptualizing everything in your own brain therefore you turn your own brain your own intellect into your god now i'm not saying you shouldn't use your brain or your intellect absolutely you should but you shouldn't use your brain and your intellect as your god ultimately you are the god of yourself you shall be gods unto yourself knowing good from evil conceptualizing what you think is good and evil that's what the fall of man was the fall of man was a fall out of a higher level of consciousness a spiritual level of consciousness where where the all-knowing spirit god knows everything god there's that word again the spirit knows everything all answers to all problems to everything is in the spirit some people might even call that the quantum field okay you know the the field Einstein talked about a field quantum physics talk about a field I believe that I believe that's the closest science has come to representing God so that field has the answers to everything and if you live in a higher level of consciousness where you let go of your reliance on your brain to come up with the answers and you kind of you kind of stress the field in a way it's hard to explain it it's kind of like you almost put out a quiet request to the field like you don't know what to do in your life you don't know which way to turn you put a quiet request out to the field and the field gives you an intuition that's a higher level of consciousness now Adam and Eve lost that higher level of consciousness and had to now rely on their own intellect their knowledge of good and evil to live now religion is the ultimate manifestation of the knowledge of good and evil uh, but so is mankind so is you know con uh, so-called civilization laws and everything that's all all a way of living from the knowledge of good and evil someone who lives from a higher level of consciousness does not need any laws a person who lives from a higher level of consciousness does not require any laws because they'll be connected to the originating um, spirit the spirit of God quote unquote so this is what I believe Adam and Eve the story of Adam and Eve represents the fall into a lower level of consciousness from a much higher level of consciousness you see God's everywhere God's always there but we become blind to God uh, in Isaiah somewhere it says like, something about a veil a veil came over their eyes and they stumbled and fell into the ditch and I forget where that is now um, but that's what it is is we have a veil we have we've forgotten who we are because we've lost that higher level of consciousness this is why I'm writing a book called Paradise Amnesia it's basically on this subject essentially this is I mean this is the only subject I talk about we have Paradise Amnesia that's what we have the human race has Paradise Amnesia okay we have a low level of consciousness it, and I have a low level of consciousness I'm still working through my baggage because I only just discovered this in the last few years and I'm 50 odd you know it takes a while to unpackage everything but one thing I've noticed is, is my intelligence has gone up since discovering this which is a strange thing because the average uh, atheist type person would say oh yeah you Christians or you spiritual people you're always saying that you know it's wrong to think and wrong to be intellectual no no not at all it's just a different way of using your intellect you use your intellect as a tool instead of a guide that's the difference okay when you know who you are and you know, and you're the, the real you is connected to the real originating spirit aka God then that becomes your guide and your intellect is used as a tool to navigate very different you know how, most people can't make decisions I find it difficult to make decisions it's because it's because it's tough because you got to dig into your intellect and your intellect is flawed 
You know, it's it's like it's, you got to come up with this and that, and then you end up making a you end up making an emotional decision anyway most times. So it's kind of weird. But anyway, coming back to the point, I'm rambling all over the place, but hopefully this is interesting. Um, coming back to the point, the so that's the fall of Adam and Eve. So Jesus, who was actually known as the second Adam, came and lived from that higher level of consciousness that Adam and Eve would have originally had, Adam would have had, Eve would have had. He came to live from that higher level of consciousness and he walked the earth living from that high level of consciousness. And he, from that high level of consciousness, miracles took place, incredible wisdom, and a demonstration of what it's like what a man or a woman looks like sorry i'm biased because i'm a man but <laughs> you know what i mean i'm mankind i mean mankind you know don't get me wrong but what what mankind looks like demonstrate what mankind should look like quote unquote should look like and even on the cross he didn't fall into that lower level of consciousness although maybe temporarily because when he said why have you forsaken me I believe he took on the mindset of man or you know I'm not sure what that actually happened there in that moment or whether that's even translated correctly who knows but his life was a demonstration of living from a high level of consciousness so back to the point what does through me mean Jesus said no one comes to the Father except through me as far as I'm concerned through me means through Jesus's higher level of consciousness which is attainable for all of us and I believe that you see this is where I've changed a lot because I used to be very see I used to be really against legalism you know you must do this you must do that you must do this and must do that but what I'm against is I'm, I'm against the motivation behind that legalism because I believe it's satanic satanic once again it, a word full of baggage okay let's let's change the word not satanic let's call it evil and what I mean by evil is as in opposite when I use the word evil in fact evil is L live backwards if you spell evil backwards it's L-I-V-E evil is L-I-V-E backwards so evil is live backwards so okay back to the point I'm rambling sorry so the high level of consciousness is to live, is to not live backwards. Now, I used to think that when a Christian would say, that's a sin, I would kind of rebel against that because I used to think, well, that's just your nonsensical legalistic mindset and um, God's not pedantic like that. You know, that's that's where I came from. And I believe that's true, but that's not the point. It misses the point. You see, that idea is framed in the idea that your actions are storing up information in God's big book. And depending on how you acted, you know, you're going to balance either way. You could go to hell, you could go to heaven. That's what that's based on, that whole idea, that mindset. But I don't believe that anymore. What I believe is, it's not about right and wrong. It's not about the idea of that's a sin, that's not a sin. That's wrong, that's right. But I do believe in purity. Now what do I mean by that? The, reason I, the only reason I believe in purity is because I believe impurity lowers your level of consciousness where you cannot see God. Now... There's a scripture, it says, the carnal mind cannot see God. The carnal mind is essentially another way of describing what I've described through this whole video, which is the lower level of consciousness that Adam and Eve fell into, that Jesus lived above. The carnal mind, it says in scripture that the carnal mind cannot see God Okay, and it says it thinks it's foolishness and so on and so forth. But the carnal mind, that's 
that's talking about obviously people who are completely living from the carnal mind but I believe you can live from the carnal mind and still be part of religion I believe that many many Christians live from the carnal mind all they've done is they've transferred one set of ideas for a religious set of ideas but their, their mindset their level of consciousness and their mindset has really not changed you know they were chasing after drink um, food uh, whatever women whatever the bad thing you know the the carnal things but they replaced they still have a need for something to make them feel good from a carnal place and they just replaced that for a bunch of religious activity which they still need to make themselves feel good it's all self-effort it's all self actualization it's all a way of making feeling good from your own effort from your own mindset in a carnal place without needing to raise your consciousness above where you can actually see God now when you rate when your level of consciousness raises you see God now seeing that's a whole another subject I don't know I can't go into that now I'll end up on another huge tangent so when Jesus says through me I wholeheartedly believe that what that means is is through the level of consciousness that Jesus lived from his whole life which was above the carnal mindset that the whole of mankind lived from and the reason why mankind lived from that carnal mindset is because they fell into it Jesus came to be above the carnal mindset to pull mankind out of out of that carnal mindset that was the purpose of Jesus that's what meant by through him through Jesus is through a higher level of consciousness now this is why I now I never used to believe in this but I now believe in fasting I believe that if you have a relationship with food where you have comfort from food you may not even know that because you eat every day so you don't even know whether you are taking comfort from food that 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 fasting as an activity is a, is a very valuable activity because within two, three, four days you will know from your mindset and from the way you feel um, whether you have an emotional need for food. Now that's one activity of many that will help you raise your level of consciousness because you will see that you have a bad relationship with food and that naturally will raise your level of consciousness and fasting anything see see a legalist religious you know unpleasant person who tells you you're a sinner and you're going to hell tells you that you shouldn't do this you shouldn't overeat you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that from a completely legalistic point of view um, from a conceptual point of view and a judgmental point of view there's no love in it they're not telling you that you know they're just telling you that there's this angry God and it, and if you don't stop doing these things he's gonna send you to hell and punish you but what I'm, I'm saying now which I never saw said before what I'm saying now because I did videos before that's why I said that's why I'm saying before so if anyone hears this who heard me before that's why I'm saying that what I'm saying is is that all these things that are said you shouldn't do I believe now you shouldn't do them but only so but it's a personal thing it's a personal thing the reason why you shouldn't do them the reason why you need to fast and so on and so forth and meditate is to is to have your level of consciousness higher so that you have a deeper connection with the Father that's how you see God Jesus had a deep relationship with the Father he said it's not I I need to do with the Father I see the Father why do you call me good only God is good you know it's it's a very important point Jesus lived a life in union with the originating spirit in that level of consciousness who do you know? I mean, go to your, I'm not being funny, but go to your local church and everyone's, a, not everyone, but a vast amount of people are overweight. 
okay, a vast amount of people, and this, I don't mean to be judgmental, I'm not judging them, I don't, I'm not meaning it from that point of view, I've got some extra weight, because I've only just understood this myself, In the, I've only understood this to this level, I used to talk about consciousness before, but I've understood it at a deeper level now, and, you know, I, w I wouldn't tell you if I was, but I'm, I'm going, I'm going to be actively fasting at some point, and if it's for spiritual reasons, I'm not going to even bring it up. I might bring it up at some later date, who knows. Because I don't think it's something you should discuss. It's a personal thing. But the reason why, just a side point, just to, just to show you that I'm not judging, I see that the reason why people are overweight in churches, or whatever, they're angry or they have problems, I mean, many people, I find, I've find i seen churches and there's a lot of people who are overweight in this one particular church I saw. Um, and the reason why they are is because they're not, like, no one's telling them this. They're telling, no one's really, it's like they're wrapped up in the whole religion. They don't understand that there's something much greater. There's, there's a greater joy and there's a greater peace above all the carnal religious rituals and activity where they will literally have a relationship with God rather than a relationship with an organization that tells them about God. I mean, how bizarre is that? I mean, it says in the Bible also, call no man teacher. You know, go inward. Connect with the Spirit and that. Let that be your teacher. The Holy Spirit will teach you this. Call it the Holy Spirit, if you like. It's, just, it's a different. It's a way of describing an attribute of, you know, the, the originating spirit. It's almost like the Holy Spirit is the, the spirit that's everywhere, essentially. If you want to, you know, just to describe what that is. So I don't know if I finished that thought, but you know, if you're if you're overweight and you're in a, in your organize you're in an organization that's telling you about God, um, it's not really telling you to. You know, it's not really giving you a good reason. See, it's one thing to say to someone you need to stop eating, but they can't stop eating. They can't. They're in pain. <laughs> People overeat because they're in pain. It, it's a comfort. As the pain comes up, they reach for food instead of letting the pain come up. And the pain is based on whatever, childhood traumas. Uh, being distant from God it causes pain. It's like a vicious cycle. If people were told, if people understood that like the reason why you want to if you understand that, that the reason why you're eating is to kill a pain, and if you understand that if you just go through that pain and go through the process of raising your level of consciousness through meditation, through being still and knowing that He is God, that's what meditation is, be still, observe your own thoughts, observe your own thoughts like you're a scientist observing something and studying it. Because in that action, you become objective and separate. You separate from your thoughts. If you're separating from your thoughts and watching your thoughts, who's, who's the one watching? That's the real you, my friends. That's the real you. That's the real you, the one that's watching. Just be careful your ego doesn't jump in and, and, be, and try and become part of the real you. Because it plays a game like that, where you start to feel superior. And, and holy and like, oh wow, I'm very objective now. But the real you is that quiet, observing. So when you observe your thoughts, when you observe your thoughts, from almost from a scientific point of view, where you observe your thought, you're like, wow, look what I'm thinking. Wow, look how my mind's working. Wow. If you nurture that, that is the best path to raise your level of consciousness. Now when you raise your level of consciousness, 
what you find is because you're closer to the spirit not that you're really distant from it you just can more connected to it i guess is a better way to put it because you feel that spirit and have a connection to it in that higher level of consciousness you start to find that spirit gives you the the comfort instead of the food see that every time you reach for the food you you satisfy a pain and you get comfort from something that's not god so it's very important that all these things purity is important I never understood this because I was in I was in rebellion against religion and their nonsensical legalistic ways. Okay, so that was an ego. That was me coming from my ego. Absolutely, I agree. Yes, I admit, I confess. <laughs> but now I see that this the purity is so vital because the purity is part of the package of raising your level of consciousness. So through Jesus through his purity through his level of consciousness when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights I mean that's pretty you know he was tempted with food <laughs> it's uh anyway this video is getting a bit long I'm going to stop here I really didn't intend it to get this long um that's it thanks for listening and uh See ya. Oh yeah, I should always, <laughs> always forget this part. You know, I'm in this worldly place, YouTube and all the rest of it. Please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the little bell notification. And um, comment, ask questions. Please comment on the uh, video. It, it all helps. You know, I'd like to, I want to, obviously I'm doing this video because I want to spread a message. I want this to help people. So if you help you know, YouTube's a tough nut to crack. Um, it takes time to get any traction. I'm getting like 50 views a time now. So I think people could learn. You know, it's like there's other people talking about what I'm talking about, but I've noticed this that certain people relate to me. So that's maybe that's just my job in, in this. You know, I'm 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 just a certain character talking about the same thing as. 20 other different types of characters that different people relate to different people like or relate to different people so I'm character I'm character 22A <laughs> you know do you know what I mean it's like whatever talking about the same thing as many other people are talking about um, so that's why I want to, that's why I'm doing this I want to reach people so if you can help me do that I'd appreciate it